Growing mushrooms requires a specific atmosphere. It requires this atmosphere all year. So you need a device which can create and maintain this atmosphere. So this is what I have chosen here. It's an Inatech Omni Building Energy Management System, or BEMS. Yeah, I know it's a bit of a mouthful. But this should be able to control all the uh, climate conditions or atmospheric conditions of my farm. The main two reasons I've chosen this device here is because it's got about 20 input and 20 output ports and they're all configurable. On top of that, all the logic is run via software. So it does away with the need to actually have a physical PID controller, let's say controlling humidity. Instead, you would just wire in the humidity probe to an input, have the output going to a humidifier, and you'd run a virtual PID controller as software, which would be run internally in here, and it's configurable via your PC. So just what is this capable of exactly? Well, let's have a look at some of the devices we can connect into this, and some of the outputs we can run from this. And on top of that, we'll look at some of the logic we can use. Firstly, don't mind the mess here. These loose wires are all our uh, sensors which are buried around the farm. We're gonna have a whole lot more than this. These ones we've got wired in currently, and this is controlling uh, the ventilation system. And I've got a basic program already running for this, which is detecting levels of CO2 and ventilating accordingly. Hey guys, if you're interested in the technical drawings for any part of my farm, they're going to be made available for purchase and download. So if you're interested in the real nuts and bolts of specifically, let's say, how my uh, ventilation system works, you'll be able to download the PDF document, which should cover um, how it's been built, all the parts we've used, and exactly how it functions, the sizing, everything you need to know. They will be made available on my uh, website shortly. Uh, our website's being rebuilt, our opensupport.co.nz website. Um, and once the new one's built, they will all be available. So take you through a quick wander around. Um, obviously, that's the data line running to my PC going up into the device. Um, all of these are sensors which are currently um, in place or are going to be wired in place. If we come in here to one of my fruiting rooms, on the wall up here, that is a temperature and, um, it's actually a tem uh, sorry, not temperature, humidity and dew point sensor. I went with dew point, I don't know why I should have gone temperature because you can just calculate dew point, but we've got a temperature and dew point sensor. Um, with the dew point we can make sure we get no condensate line on the ground. And down here is my CO2 sensor. And that's right above the exhaust fan here. Now that fan's actually running very, very, very slowly. It's on about 12% duty cycle. And that's about the minimum it will do. You can't really feel much air going through here. But if we exhale onto this, these fans will really kick up. The other one is mounted back here on the roof up here. So that's the, that's the fan pumping air in. And again, that's running on dead slow. You can hardly feel any air coming out. In fact, I'm gonna go as far as I can say, you can't feel any air coming out, but that's okay. What we will do is we will inhale onto this Vaisala um, CO2 sensor here. These CO2 sensors are actually a bit slow. Um, they do take about a minute to, to really register and catch up. They're not like instantaneous readings like temperature probes are often or near instantaneous, but I will just exhale onto this. Don't know if you can hear that getting louder. Oh, that one at the back. It might actually help if I plug this one at the back on. So now that one there, there we go. Now that's actually on, it wasn't on. Yeah, so there we are there. You can really feel that air getting sucked out through here. And it's getting pumped in. Here. So it's coming in through there. Now what we can do, if I've configured this correctly on the computer, I did it briefly last night. This door, See it sucking in. So that's it's doing that because the room's negatively pressured, which means that that extractor fan is sucking out more air than this fan's blowing in, which is what we want for a fruiting room. You can feel that it'll just basically shut itself. 
Perfect, right, perfect. So currently that's all functioning from this controller here. Now I'll bring that up, what it looks like on the PC, and I'll show you just how it's configured and how relatively easy it is to configure um, um, devices like fans and uh, sensors together with this controller. So let's have a look at the software which allows you to build a configuration file and then install it onto your device. The computer doesn't run or your PC doesn't actually run the device. All you use uh, the software for is to um, build that configuration. Uh, the device itself actually runs it, so you upload it to the device and the device will run it itself um, without the need for your computer to be on or be near it. But from the computer we can also monitor it which is good. So looking at this, um, initially you can see on the top left here you get to choose your blocks, um, input, output and logic mainly. In the middle here is where you build your circuit you might call it. Um, you can see mine as a basic circuit being built there. And then on the right hand side you've got your editor where you can edit each um, block individually. So the input, output, you can see on the left here the blue means it's an input. Um, and we can choose any input we want, right? So we can choose a sense input, that would be like a, uh, a, thermo, a thermocouple or like a voltage input, and we can just drag and drop them in just like that there. We can also choose an output which is yellow, so we can have a current loop output thrown in there, we can have a duty cycle output, like pulse width, width modulation output. Um, so there is, there is a, a, a lot of options to choose from, but we'll delete those. And then of course in the middle um, is our logic. So if we look on the top left here, it starts off with accumulator, actuator, alarm, and it goes right down through a whole bunch of different logics you can use. Um, some common ones you might have seen before, obviously, is a PID loop. So we can have a, a software-based PID controller in the middle there, and you just simply drag and drop it on and then configure the settings for it. So if we look at my, circ my circuit, we can see down the left here we've got three um, uh, 4 to 20 milliamp inputs. Now 4 to 20 these are actually 2 to 20, that should be 4. These are 4 to 20 milliamp inputs are a, 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 a kind of like an industry standard. So you see a lot of probes will run, or a lot of uh, sensors will run a 4 to 20 milliamp output. So this top one here is the CO2 probe which we looked at. Um, down here you can see the 4 to 20 milliamp. And then this runs into this here which is a universal curve. Now this I define 4 milliamp equals 0, or 0 ppm because that's a, that's a CO2 probe, so it's measuring ppms, and I know that this probe measures between 0 to 2000 ppm, which means that 4 milliamp is going to equal 0 ppm, and 20 milliamp is going to equal 2000 ppm on a, on a, line, on a linear curve. Um, so we just define it in here, you can see the line there, so when the output of this is, is 20 milliamp, that will equal 2000 parts per million of CO2. So that's what that does. Then we run it into this here, which is a linear scale, um, and then we define the minimum input as 500 ppm, because we're getting the, the, the output from this, from this universal curve here into the linear scale, and it's going to read the, the input, so anything under 500 is going to equal an output of 12%. And the maximum input here, 2000, which is a 2000 ppm, is going to equal 100% output. So that basically means that Anything below 500 ppm is going to run the fan at 12%, and anything above 2000 ppm, anything up to 2000 ppm is going to run the fan upwards of 100%. So as those ppm levels increase, so does the fan speed increase. And that's connected to the extractor fan here, which is a 0 to 10 volt input. Now to have a fan that functions like this, you need what's called an EC fan. And they're fans, and they have uh, an extra cable in there for a 0 to 10, usually a 0 to 10 volt input. And with that 0 to 10 volt input, you can define the speed of the fan. Not all fans can do this, just DC fans. But all the fans I've got here on the farm have this capability. And then we also, it also feeds down into here, which is another universal curve, which is a duty cycle reducer, which means that the input is 12. And this duty cycle reducer is, is feeding my supply fan. And because we want the room negatively pressured, we want that supply pan working less than the uh, extractor fan, because we want the room sucking more out than, than it's pumping in, so it's at a negative pressure. So the supply pan, when, the, when the extractor fan's at 12, the supply fan's at 12, so they're even. But when the extractor fan goes to 36%, the, uh, the supply fan only goes to 20. So on and so forth, down to 100%. So when the extractor fan's running at 100%, the supply fan is only running at 65%. Now that keeps the room at a really uh, good negative pressure uh, the whole time. Now we can also look down, I've got two more probes here. We've got the humidity probe, um, again 4 to 20 milliamp. 
um, and this just runs straight into a universal curve, which it defines four as zero percent humidity because we know that humidity probe reads zero to 100 percent humidity. So four equals zero percent humidity, and 20 milliamp equals 100 percent humidity. And the same with the dew point. This probe has actually humidity and a dew point. Uh, it measures the dew point, not the temperature. Um, I should have got temperature, but I didn't. I got dew point, but I will. So the dew point you can define in here as well. And the settings are usually given to you in the probe for 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 the for the four to twenty million output what it equates to. And this uh, dew point equates to negative uh, forty Celsius, and twenty milliamp equals sixty degrees Celsius. So that's a really basic circuit. The humidity and the dew point don't control anything. There's no logic on those yet, well, apart from those two there, but there's no controlling logic. Um, and just the CO2 is running. So what we can do is we can actually um, view this live. So what we do is we... So this gives us the ability to actually monitor the circuit in real time. And when we're monitoring it, we'll be able to pull up uh, the numbers that those probes are giving us and we'll be able to show you. From there, what we will also do is we'll also do some exhaling on the CO2 probe to watch, um, to show you guys how uh, it's going to turn those, when it detects a high level of CO2, it's going to speed those fans up. So here we've got the monitoring going. So the current loop input, and we can read the value of that as, as seven, sorry, these lost their tags, uh, their titles. So that's the CO2 one there, and that's reading at 7.24 milliamp. And once it runs through this output, it changes it to 403 ppm. So it's currently reading 404 parts per million. Now after that runs through the linear scale, that is telling our fan to run at 12%, which is the bare minimum for the fan. So that fan in there now is actually operating at 12%. Um, and that's just obviously feeding to its voltage output here. This also feeds into the universal curve at 12%, but the universal curve does change it, right? So it's going to change it. At bare minimum, 12% it doesn't, but as these fans speed up, it will change it. So you'll actually watch this fan here, which is a supply fan, function at, at that, that's a percentage-based function, so it's at 12% now. You actually see that one function at a, at a lower speed than this one. And of course, we've got the current loop input for the, for the humidity, which is giving us a value of, wrong side, giving us a value of 32.63% humidity here now. So it's quite warm and it's quite dry. And then dew point, and this is going to tell us what the dew point is right now, which is 8.55 degrees. So if the temperature will go from like what it is now, 24 degrees Celsius, down to about 8.5 degrees, you'll actually get dew starting to form. So it's quite a big change in temperature to get the dew to form, and it's, it's so big because it's really low humidity uh, here right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop out the back here, and I'm going to exhale in our probe, and we'll watch this this reading, this milliamp reading here, actually increase as I exhale on it, and that will cause a chain reaction and start making these fans work harder to try and get that CO2 out of the room. Of course, the room won't really be full with a lot of CO2, it's just me simulating a high CO2. So there we have, I've just breathed on the CO2 probe, and we're gonna watch this uh, value change. The CO2 probes aren't the fastest at um, reporting a change. Here we go, it's, it's speeding up now. So it's gone up to 10 milliamp or 800 ppm, and the fan speeds have gone up. So this, speed, this fan's now working at about 30%, the extractor fan, and the, the supply fan's still working at about 20%. And so we can see the fan's work, starting to work harder now as that ppm starts going over 1,000. We've also got our, you, you, you can watch that go up. We've also got our, uh, our humidity uh, input here. So I'll go and I'll exhale on the uh, humidity input, and we'll watch that humidity change from 32% and it will rise as well. So there we go, all I needed to do, to do was exhale on that uh, humidity probe and we can see it's pushed that humidity up to about 80%. And that's already dropping, so the humidity probe refreshes really quickly, it's really fast at reading. That's already going back down to 55, 53, 51, so that's going to settle back down to around that 35% humidity uh, very quickly. You can also see it, it, it change the, uh, the dew point as well, rose, as that humidity rose, that dew point rose, um, and that's going to come back down accordingly. So this device here gives us the ability to monitor our, our circuits in real time. Um, the, once the farm is built, the circuit's going to be a whole lot more complex than this. For example, I'm going to have door switches. So the minute you open a door, um, all the extractor fans cease working and all the humidification ceases working. So that room just basically, all the air goes still. So you go and you do what you need to do and you leave and you close that door and everything fires back up again. Um, this is going to stop things like 
opening that door in a really, uh, let's say, hot, dry day and all this dry air just flooding in there because um, we want that atmosphere to stay perfect really 100% um, of the time. So if you've seen any of my last videos, you will know that um, I tried, tried to build my own automation controller, mainly just out of sheer stupidity, right? Like, I had no idea what I was doing. I wanted it automated, I wanted it easy, but a oh, big piece of pie and too big for me to swallow. But this piece of pie here is a whole lot easier. Um, you do have to actually do their training. If you want to buy one of these, that was 4,000 New Zealand dollars. So probably 3,000 US dollars. And then you have to do the training as well. And it takes about two days, not that complicated. Um, I'm pretty, pretty savvy on a computer, um, so it wasn't too hard for me. Some people might find it a bit more challenging. If you're not familiar um, with computers or sort of networking, um, it might be a bit harder, but give it a go. Um, once you do the training, they, of course, um, will sell you the product, and then uh, you're on your own. So, yeah, but, you know, it's going really good so far, and I do uh, foresee that most of the farm will be running on that device.